Dear students, in this module, I'll introduce you the topics related with homology modeling and systems biology that will be part of this course. So let's take a look at the topics that will be covered within these two chapters. In the homology modeling chapter, I will introduce you to what homology modeling really is and why do we need this homology modeling or structure prediction. We'll look at the seven steps, the very important steps in homology modeling and see several algorithms for them. We'll also see how fold recognition or threading works and we'll see some online tools for threading as well. This will be followed by the Gore algorithm. I'll introduce you to the Gore algorithm which is used in predicting the structures as well as the 3D, 1D Bowie algorithm. We'll also see how machine learning approaches can be employed in structure prediction. Specifically, neural networks will be evaluated. Cypred tool will be introduced to you and we'll also touch on the hidden Markov models and this will be followed by ab initio modeling. Heinz and Levitt algorithm will be used and the computational assessment of structure prediction or CASP will be introduced to you to evaluate the quality of structure prediction. Online tools for homology modeling will be listed for you and the databases that are out there will be provided as well. We'll then perform a case study on hepatitis C virus, NS3 and the protein its folding and associated dynamics in homology modeling chapter. In the next chapter of systems biology, we'll put the proteins into action inside a cell. We'll see how the genes, their transcripts, the proteins, how they work at very different spatial as well as temporal scales. I'll introduce you to systems biology and then show you hallmarks of cancer as a systems level property. Integrative biomolecular approaches will be introduced and we'll see how biomolecular networks help us to work in systems biology. To build some foundation, we'll see networks as graphs and we'll see several of their properties. Adjacency descriptors of these graphs will be introduced and topological definitions will also be included. We'll see how various network motifs exist and their regulatory behaviors in biological networks. The overall dynamical behavior of the networks will also be provided here and we'll see how we can construct these networks by looking at the experimental data. We'll see how to define a co-expression network at this point and convert that representation into a stochastic graph. The protein interaction databases that will be used to construct these graphs will also be provided to you here. Continuing on, we'll construct the networks and see how the dynamics of these networks they work and behave and see how iterative approaches can help us to estimate the various parameters. I'll also talk about sensitivity analysis and how you can see which parameter is sensitive to changes within the network. At this point multi-scale modeling in biology will be introduced and I'll show you how to integrate cross-scale data within a model. Continuous and discrete variables will be defined for you and I'll show you how to integrate them into the model. An example will be provided at the end of this chapter. So with these contents, you will get an overview of the entire bioinformatics field. After covering these topics, you should have a basic foundation to the various subfields within bioinformatics and this should prepare you towards taking advanced topics within the subfields.